so excited. It just looks beautiful. Yummy, Chef. Oh, goodness, that aroma is fantastic. Hey everybody, I'm Vera Stewart and welcome to The Very Vera Show. You know, last week I said I'm going to be going nuts on The Very Vera Show this week. Well, if you know me well, you know that honestly I could live on nuts. My children say I eat squirrel food, but I love everything that has nuts in it. So today we're doing three recipes using nuts. We're going to start with the cherry and peanut bruschetta and it uses boiled peanuts. We're going to learn about those. And then we're going to do a pork chop that has a peach and pecan salsa that is a fabulous entree. And then finally, a peanut butter pie with an almond oatmeal crust that we are noted for in our catering division. So I know you're going to love it. And then in Vera's Corner today, we're going to talk about knife cuts. People ask all the time, which knife should I use when I'm making something? So I'm going to make it easier for you, and then we'll learn about these dishes. So since I've got everything in front of me to make the bruschetta, I thought we'd just go ahead and get started. So what I have done here is the boiled peanuts. Okay, in Georgia, during the fall, you cannot possibly go anywhere to a ball game and not see on the side of the road people boiling peanuts, everybody's pulling over, they're going to get those. It's the favorite snack and people are very particular about their boiled peanuts. So for us, we have had the Lee brothers from Charleston join us a couple of times on the Very Vera show. They are really experts on boiled peanuts, Matt and Ted Lee, and they just have a fabulous recipe. We love to make it on Saturday of a football game because the process takes you know over five hours to do but you get to smell it going on you know if you're at home or outside in your entertainment area it's just really nice so what you do is you soak the raw peanuts you're gonna buy raw peanuts at the grocery store then you're gonna drain that off after you've soaked them you're gonna boil them for about three to five hours in the meantime you're gonna be adding salt throughout the process because all that water is gonna boil away so the salt is really to taste we think a boiled peanut is supposed to be salty, but you may not want to put quite as much salt. But that recipe will be on our website at verivera.com. All right, so this recipe is a really unique appetizer. And this time of year, it's very colorful for the holiday season. So what I've done here is I've got my butter melted, um, got it ready to go. I'm going to turn the heat up just a little bit on that. I'm going to add my breadcrumbs. And all I'm doing here is just getting these saute the breadcrumbs sauteed. And then this is the peanut that I have already taken. It's cooled down. I've peeled it. And you know, I said, how do you get a peanut out of a shell carefully? Well, in the South, we just actually use our teeth. But you can pop them right out. And we got these just to the right um, consistency. And then I have a new product I want to tell you about. I am in love this with this wooden flex board. It is a cutting board. The top of it is a wood veneer that is just fabulous. And the nice thing about it is it has this non-stick flexible surface. You know, these small cutting boards that we need to use in the kitchen from time to time. This thing goes in the dishwasher, y'all. So you've got the nice wood feature on the top. You've got the bottom that'll make it adhere to the counter. And then when you get ready to put these chopped peanuts in the bowl, all you do is curve it and there it goes. So I really love this and we've got a little treat for you at the end on those. All right, so I'm gonna add my peanuts now to this butter just to get some of that brine off. And I can smell those breadcrumbs, they smell wonderful. And then the cherries on here, this is another recipe you can make when cherries are in season, but the recipe actually calls for frozen cherries. So what I've done with that is you just let the cherries boil, you've gotten them nice and soft, then I've taken my spoon and cut those in half, let it cook down with a slurry. You see it's gotten nice and thick, so that's really wonderful. So let me stir this together. And then during the break, I'm going to build this bruschetta so it'll be nice and attractive for our presentation at the end. 
And when we come back from the break, we're going to get started on that pork chop. So join me in just a minute, smelling and looking good in here. Welcome back everybody and you know the title of this episode is going nuts and of course you know I go nuts a lot for a lot of different reasons but my favorite reason for doing this today is the fact that I love nuts. I eat nuts a lot. I love nuts in my food. Um, I have to kind of separate that. My husband is not a big fan of nuts but I love dishes that have nuts in them. So we just finished with the bruschetta with the cherries and the boiled peanuts and it's wonderful. And this particular dish is going to use pecans, which of course in the state of Georgia is one of the things that we're noted for. So I've got my lodge griddle heating up over here. So this is a dish that you can do on your grill or you can use your inside griddle to do it either way. But I've got some beautiful lean pork loin pork chops and I'm going to just go ahead and put a little bit of salt and pepper on these. You don't need a heck of a lot because this salsa that we're going to do on the top of this is delicious and it's going to be just the ticket for something different. And you know, when we try some of these new recipes, a lot of times I will think of other things that I can do with components of the recipe or, you know, how I put a twist on things and maybe I'll add an ingredient. So let's flip these over real quick. And I've just got oil on my lodge skillet to get that going. And you know, the nice thing about lodge cast iron is that the more you use it, the less oil you have to use because it has a nice coat of seasoning on it. All right, a little bit more pepper. Do that quick. All right, so remember this summer when we went to Titan Farms and showed you how the farm, how the peaches are raised there and grown there and just how wonderful it was. And then I came back, we came back with bushels of peaches and we froze them. So these are the Titan Farm peaches that we have just diced into little pieces for this salsa. So the recipe is that, your red onion, basil, y'all. I mean, what better ingredient to go with peaches and basil? Got a little jalapeno, some lime juice, some salt, and then we're going to add these pecans. And I just used my wooden flex board, chopped those with my butcher knife, just tilted it and poured it right in. So those are good. that's going to go in there too. And this is going to be the salsa on these pork chops. But I can promise you, you could use this saucer for a lot of things. It could just, it could be a side dish with ham. So let's get these pork chops going now. This should be just right. There it goes. Oh, you know, and and honestly, like a um, a pork chop with a big bone on it would also make a beautiful presentation. So on these kinds of dishes, one of the recommendations that I would make, because that lime juice is going to keep these peaches from turning colors, would be to make this ahead. Maybe make this the day before, because let that basil really soak in, let the red onion work, and it's going to maintain its color because of the citrus in the lime juice. I just really, really like that. All right, so in Vera's Corner today, I'm going to give you some knife tips. I get asked a lot of things. A lot of my ideas for Vera's Corner come from questions that we get asked from viewers. So if you have a question or if you'd love to see us give a little mini on something that you're interested in, I hope that you will email us about that. And then the next thing we're going to do is a peanut butter pie with an almond oatmeal crust and a great topping. So come back with us in just a few minutes. Those are about ready to flip.
Vera's Corner is sponsored by Tax Slayer. It's your refund, go get it. Today we're gonna to do a fan favorite mini that I hope you'll enjoy. It's always great to brush up on your knife skills and those six skills are chop, dice, mince, julegan, and chiffonade. To chop an onion, slice off the end opposite the root, then slice the onion through the root. Make parallel cuts toward the root, make one perpendicular cut through the middle of the onion, then chop down vertically to create onion pieces. Dicing is similar to chopping, but it calls for more precision and smaller pieces. A diced ingredient should be around a quarter of an inch long. Mincing is like dicing, but very small. To mince garlic, thinly slice the peeled garlic clove, then run your knife over the pieces for a few passes until the garlic is in small pieces. Mincing doesn't need to be precise. To julienne is to cut into small matchsticks. To julienne a carrot, slice the carrot into thin rectangles, then slice the rectangles into thin, long strips. Chiffonade is a technique used to cut leafy herbs into ribbons without having to slice each individual leaf. Stack the leaves uniformly, then roll tightly and slice the roll in the thin ribbons. To have your product featured on The Very Vera Show or to sponsor an episode, email us at sponsorship at verivera.com. All right, welcome back everybody. You know, I said I'm going nutty on the Very Beer Show, which is exactly what I'm doing. And I've gotten started on our next dish, which was whipping these egg whites. So I'm gonna turn this off for just a minute. You know, we've done boiled peanuts, we've done pecans, and now I'm gonna throw a few almonds into the mix. So this is the peanut butter pie that our hospitality division of our company, Vera, is famous for. So I had a little bit that I had to do in advance to get the pie crust ready. This is my mother-in-law's recipe, Sue Stewart. She made this pie crust for everything. Where the rest of us have been using graham cracker, crumb crust, she made her own crust and it was amazing. So let me walk you through those steps. So you start with rolled oats, you add sliced almonds, light brown sugar, softened margarine, um, you use your hands or a fork to kind of mix that together, but at the end you're going to end up having to put your hands in it. It uses softened margarine and she always called it oleo, which I loved. And then you're going to press that mixture into your prepared Pyrex and I use the deep dish Pyrex pie plate. And then you're going to just take that spoon and get it really good and coated all along the side. Alright, so let me run back over here to this meringue again. I've got it whipped up. Now I'm going to add my sugar very slowly to this mixture. So this is for the meringue that's going to go on top. And we're just looking for a kind of a stiff peak here, medium peak. We're right about there. So you know, we all put meringues on pies, but have you ever heard of putting marshmallow cream in it too? So that's what we're getting ready to do to this. All right, so let me get this off the mixture. Mix, let me get this off the mixer, I should say. All right, and then we're gonna add this marshmallow cream to the mix. All right, so before I do that, let me tell you about the filling. So the filling for this pie is amazing. It uses Cool Whip, but you're gonna whip cream cheese for 10 minutes. So you, there's all kinds of things that you could be doing during that 10 minutes, but it re we really want that to be nice and whipped together. Then you're gonna stir in your Cool Whip, and that takes another five minutes and then peanut butter and vanilla. And I actually like to fold that together because I love to see all the variations in the Cool Whip and the peanut butter and you know make it really look fluffy and light. And the folding technique really helps with that. And then once you've got that filled up, then you're gonna pour it into your pie shell. So let me add now this marshmallow cream to our egg whites. Remember marshmallow fluff, y'all? Have you ever even thought that you would be buying that again at the grocery store? 
So this is going to be well worth it to do. Pretty sticky, but it does so beautifully when you put it under the broiler. All right, so all I'm doing here is just folding this together and making this into a nice peak. So let me grab the one I've already done out of the freezer. Doesn't that look awesome? Okay, so you can see the little crust going around the edge and you see what I mean about being able to see the cool whip and it just looks really nice and fluffy. So once you've got this combined, and you just have to spend just a minute to get that marshmallow fluff. I'm going to spread this all over the top. And then this is going to go under a broiler. Okay, so you're going to come back with me in just a minute. I'm going to show you a pretty holiday display with all of this. And we will see what it looks like and give you some more tips on the recipes. So come back with me in just a few minutes. back everybody and I don't know about you but I absolutely love this time of year you can decorate with things out of your yard I don't know how many times I thought I'm gonna just cut down these Nandina bushes they're just going crazy everywhere and now look the berries are the perfect color for everything I've done today you can do this yourself it just makes a beautiful presentation pull out the placemats for the holidays I never use gold flatware but I've used it today because it really goes with the whole look and you know bringing in some of my holiday china mixing it in with solid red I just love the way everything has turned out today not to mention that we've gone nuts with nuts today and a lot of different recipes. So let's start back with the first thing we made today which was the cherry and boiled peanut bruschetta. You know I started with a baguette um, you cut it on the diagonal um, just use a serrated knife and we did it about three-fourths of an inch thick. Then you're going to put those on a sheet pan in the oven on 350 for about eight to ten minutes just to get them crisp. If you want to sprinkle a little you know smear a little butter or olive oil on there you certainly can. But then you top it it with the cherry filling that we cooked down we got thick with a slurry and then you're going to add the peanut boiled peanut mixture on the top with the breadcrumbs and a little bit of fresh mint it's just delicious and then I just love it on my holiday platter so that turned out really good and you know what this is Trisha Yearwood's recipe and if you're a texture person but as a kid you loved a peanut butter and jelly sandwich but you used creamy peanut butter and you had jelly that had no seeds or anything in it and now as an adult you love texture this is your childhood peanut butter and jelly sandwich in an appetizer it is fantastic all right so then look at our plate we've got our grilled pork chop we did the Titan Farms peaches that we froze and we are using them all year just like I told you would if you froze them when they were in season and we've just garnished the top of that grilled pork chop with that salsa and remember make this recipe and think about all the other ways that you could use it other than for dinner I mean you could actually just eat it in a bowl as a side dish and then finally the peanut butter pie it is the star of the show during the Masters Golf Tournament in Augusta through my Vera Hospitality division of our company. I'm wearing that logo today. We do so many dinners and you know help folks from out of town enjoy their guests and enjoy the tournament by providing all of the hospitality services during the tournament. And so it's mile high with that meringue. It just looks incredible. And then garnish the plate. You know that crust is going to kind of crumb up a little bit when you cut it so use that as the garnish people will think that was intentional you know add that chocolate to the plate it just looks great all right so remember that cutting board that I use that flexible wooden cutting board this is wooden flex 
and they are sold on Amazon and they just love the Berry Beer Show y'all and they're going to give us a promotional code when you go to Amazon to purchase this product and I highly recommend it. I want you to put in Vera Show all lowercase 25 to get a 25% discount on this product. Perfect time of year to give this as a gift. So remember what I always say on the Berry Vera Show no matter what you do, do it in good taste. I hope you provide, I provide you with tips and suggestions that make cooking fun and easy. And I hope you'll come back next week. I'm headed back to Madison, Wisconsin to do the Christmas show at Sub-Zero Wolf and Cove. See you then.